and Big 12 tournament in store. We are just about to get underway. Ray Natilli, Ron Groover, and Antonio Petty are officials. UCF in the home whites. Houston, the away blacks. Let's play some basketball. Jalen Sellers, he's had an outstanding year. Five seniors on her tonight for UCF. There's the starting five. CJ Walker goes glass to start. Ibrahima Diallo, another one of those seniors. And Shamari Allen was outstanding against Iowa State last weekend. The Houston Five. Jamal Shedd has done it all this year. LJ Cryer, Emmanuel Sharp, the sophomore. We got Francis and Roberts also. Roberts, the big man, number 13, down low. Well, double dribble that time, yeah. and UCF defensively forces their first turnover. Yeah, a bit of indecision right there from Javier Francis. Once he received that ball in the paint, Ibrahima Diallo is not an easy guy to go up over and score. Seeing a bit of America's play right here from UCF. Nearly every team in college basketball runs this. You get the back door into the dribble handoff, trying to get ball reversals and look for gaps to attack. On the floor again, it's Walker looking inside to Diallo. Good catch down there with two to shoot. Grabs his own miss. Good hustle by the big man, but he's out of bounds and it'll belong to the Cougars. UCF had an incredible effort on Saturday against Iowa State. BJ, they just got to watch the ball go down more often as Kelvin Sampson is 10th season. Such a unique coach. We had such an interesting meeting with him earlier today. Absolutely. Coach Sampson talked about his team in the sense of don't get focused on the fact that we're the number one team in the country. That's not what he wants his players thinking about. He wants them focused on continuing to improve each and every day. You mentioned the injuries. Now they're depleted a little bit in their depth. But he said no excuses. We got to figure out a way to continue to get it done. Emmanuel Sharp, the sophomore, off the mark. Sharp making a bit of a homecoming here tonight. Here's Diallo coming to get it. Now it's sharp to the goal. He has it blocked. And the crowd ignites here in Orlando. Sellers will put it up. He's fouled. And three free throws coming up for Jalen Sellers. Right here, Jalen Sellers in transition. We usually see him scoring the basketball. Able to meet Emmanuel Sharp up at the rim, up high. Clean block right there from Sellers, a guy as we mentioned, known for his scoring for UCF, showing a little bit of two-way action right there. Sellers had a stellar year and Johnny Dawkins no moral victories for this UCF squad. Tough first year in the Big yeah. 12 they've won some big games they've come close in a lot but he wants to get more in the wing column, especially in conference play. Looks like that yeah. will be three shots. Yeah, it looked clean. And the whole sequence started with a really nice play from Manuel Sharp forcing the steal, but then kind of compounded his mistake with that block layup, the three-point foul right there of Jalen Sellers, not what Coach Sampson wants to see, obviously. And, you know, we spoke with Coach Johnny Dawkins earlier today. He mentioned how our team fights and competes each and every single game. We've only had one game, he said, his team, that Kansas State got away from them in their first conference game. Every other game has been extremely competitive, but down the stretch, can this team make the plays they have to make to come out on top? Told his seniors tonight, remember this night for the rest of your lives. Gonna get a special effort out of UCF tonight. Well, here's Jamal Shedd. Cross court, LJ Cryer, his first shot. Well, Cougars do not have their legs under them here in the opening minutes. Here's Sellers. And right now, the entire building, all the momentum on the side of UCF. A bit of what we expected, though, on a senior night in Orlando for this group. Houston has to settle down, lock in, and do what they've done all season. Get back to playing good quality basketball. Jump hook in the lane is off. Roberts comes back to get it and banks it in. So Jawan Roberts, the 6'7", 40, at 20 
yeah. against Oklahoma on Saturday night. Well, one of the best offensive rebounders in the Big 12 is Roberts. Does a great job of getting on the back. Right now, C.J. Walker feeling good. Early on scene night, right there, using that quick rip he has going right to finish up and high off the glass. Good start for Skywalker. Graduate student out of Sanford. Shed cannot put it in. But there is Emmanuel Sharp, and he'll be bumped as he grabbed the basketball. And it will be the first on Shamari Allen. You see right here, this is one of the things UCF has done really well this year, getting out and running on other teams' misses, especially Jalen Sellers and Shamari Allen. Both these guys so athletic, so fast out on the break. One of the keys for UCF tonight is on a Houston miss, they have to be more aggressive even than they usually are looking to score in transition. Why? Because that use that you excuse me, that Houston half court defense is so imposing. Any chance you got in numbers out on the break, you gotta take it. Shamari Allen checked out of the game. Looked like he was shaking up just a bit on that last play as Tamar Lankford, number 12, has entered the game. Here's Shed. Good screen roll. And scored. Nicely done. Javier Francis, junior out of New Orleans. Yeah, and that ball screen between Jamal Shed and Javier Francis is something Houston's got good action on all season long. Jamal Shedd, one of the best point guards in America, always has his head up, does a great job of reading defenses. Here's Diallo, wants to make his move now. Keeps that pivot foot on the floor and draws contact by Francis. Yeah. Right here, Javier Francis just giving up a lot of size inside against Diallo. Tries to go with hands straight up, but when you're giving up four inches and about 40 pounds, like Francis is in that matchup, it's hard not to commit a foul and you know one of the things to watch for Drew Jojo Tugler the freshman forward for Houston is out for the season now Houston's depth a little bit less lacking there don't have as much size inside can they stay out of foul trouble yeah Tugler had successful surgery today good news for the Cougars but yes he is done for the year and that has made this front line for Houston very, very thin here tonight. Well, a lot of times you look at production, as Omar Payne is going to check in for Ibrahim Diallo. A lot of times you see when a player goes out for injury, well, what were his numbers? What were his points and his rebounds? And that's not always all that matters. A lot of times it's the fact that we don't have a body to give a guy like a Jawan Roberts or a Javier Francis more rest. Oh, what a block. Skying towards the rim was Omar Payne, but put back in by Jawan Roberts. So 9-6 here out of the game. And just so good at second chance points are the Houston Cougars. Nobody goes to the offensive glass harder than a coach Sampson ball club. That's how physical Houston is inside. As once again, they force the turnover. Here come the Cougars. LJ Cryer. And it tipped. And now Jamal Shedd. Oh, great pump fake. Left it short though. Second try is up and in. A great initial move right there from Shed. Houston attacking kind of in that secondary transition. Shed able to get right back up on his miss. Jamal Shed twice a Big 12 player of the week. The undisputed leader yeah. of this team. And you know, it's, it's tremendous to see a guy like him who's been with this Houston program as long as he has. We don't have that as much in college basketball no more. So it's a, it's a pleasant sight to have that floor general leader that's been at one school for so long. Yep, he has been a constant. How about the move by Tierno Silla? Wow, that was impressive. And you know, that's one of those shots right there from Silla when he goes up, coach like, no, 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 no. And then when he makes it, it's like, it's a good shot, son. It's a good shot. <laughs> what an atmosphere tonight inside Edition Financial Arena. Number one, Houston, taking on UCF. Great to have you with us. Defense stretches out, Lankford and that trap. Out there with Omar Payne. Shed with the floater inside. It comes off. Roberts, second chance to Cryer. Cougars can't control it. It'll be Knights basketball. First time out. A fast start on both sides. And Jamal Shed, not what we're missing. Right? Teams go through things throughout the season, and some teams respond well to adversity, other teams don't. You can always count on the coach Kelvin Sampson team to respond incredibly to adversity. Does not let it become a distraction. 
Knights now with the basketball out of the timeout. And a three-point lead. Downstairs, Antoine Jones touching it for the first time. Tierno Silla had that outstanding move just minutes ago. And now five to shoot. Antoine Jones got a fire. Ripped down. And the Knights with another chance. It's Jones trying to create his own shot. Tipped up. Playing a little volleyball inside that lane as LJ Cryer comes away with it. Yeah, the first defensive rebound for Houston of this ball game comes seven minutes into the night. They already have five on board, so Houston, known for their ability as a rebounding team, seems to be tipping the ball around a lot, and I can't really get their hands on it on the defensive glass. Cougars get it down on the block. That's where yeah. Jawan Roberts wants the basketball. Yeah, and Jawan Roberts so good at going up over that right shoulder, finishing with his left hand. A physical guy inside knows what he's doing plays angles really really well That's a matchup. I would expect Houston to exploit all night long He's had some knee issues this season, but he has fought through it And playing at his best right now. Here's Shamari Allen who will turn around in the lane Not enough on that one. Cougars attacking again down one Jamal Shedd, how about that first step? Dumps it off They can't finish Now it's out does not have numbers, decides to be aggressive, and he's bumped by Cryer. Line change now for UCF, and how about Shamari Allen? Just had one season here in Orlando, BJ. This is the guy that Coach Dawkins is certainly going to miss. He just wishes he had him a little bit longer. Yeah, well, Shamari Allen is just a winning basketball player. The transfer from UMKC. A guy that was voted captain after summer workouts. Only on campus for a couple months, and his teammates said, listen, this guy's going to be our captain of our team this season. That says a lot about his character. It says a lot about what he does on the basketball court and what his teammates see in him. Yeah, what a leader he has been here in 2024. Walker, see the switch? He'll take it from the elbow. I really like the looks he is getting early in this game. Yeah, C.J. Walker. Being very aggressive early on, we'd expect that on a senior night. I'm sure Coach Dawkins would like to see him get downhill right there, closer to the basket, instead of settle for that mid-range jump shot. He's got a tripping foul on Darius Johnson. First foul on Johnson, and Shed goes to the deck. So Juwan Roberts checks out of the game, and coming in is Malik Wilson. 2 guard out of Greenville, Louisiana, and here he is, number eight. Manuel Sharp, great basketball bloodlines with this young man. Tries to dump off a pass in traffic, and that's not a good offensive set. Launching it as the clock winds down, that will be a shot clock violation. 11-10. Here in Orlando, near Midway, through half number one. No. Houston has owned UCF lately, won eight straight against the Knights. I believe you got a big victory <laughs> at Houston back in your tenure, BJ. Yeah, it was college game day. Jay Billis, the whole crew was out in Houston. Special memory, special moment. It wasn't personal, Houston. All right, it was just business. <laughs> Shamari Allen handling it now for the Knights. Good physical play down low. Diallo, once again, backing the defender in. Oh, great spin move. And when Diallo is patient, when he receives that ball down there on the block, he'll get what he wants against Javier Francis. Javier Francis just doesn't have the size. I would like to see Javier try to deny that feed into Diallo, because once he receives it, it's going to be really tough for him to deal with him down there. Wilson now, waiting for the screen. Stops at the elbow. Here's a shot, about 17 feet out, no good. Darius Johnson high up for the rebound. Official going to say it's going to be Houston basketball. Johnson came down hard that time. Yeah. You see right here, when Diallo receives this basketball, look at the ground, Javier Francis just has to give up and finally concedes the angle for Diallo to finish at the rim. Ibrahim Diallo is a true center, Drew. Javier Francis, more of a power forward, that modern-day kind of guy, right? Look at his size, look at his frame. 
That's one thing, too, you pointed out today during the walkthrough. UCF going to have the size advantage yeah. lengthwise here tonight. Yeah. Now, part of that is also, I'm sure, Coach Kelvin Sampson saying, hey, Ibrahim Diallo, not much more than a six-point score. Is he really going to give us 20? He'd, what, he'd probably like to see how that plays. Rebound by Diallo. He's fouled immediately. Saw the, the miss by Cryer. And UCF will have possession here. This is the time of year, though, you know, right before the postseason tournament, where and it is easy for a team to sneak up on you. Yeah. You know the Cougars are going to be ready, but it's also a long basketball season, so hard to maintain their level of play all year long. Absolutely. You have to give a lot of credit to the Houston Cougars going undefeated through their non-conference play, the way they've been able to pull out some close wins in this league play in the Big 12. But we've seen a couple games they've had could have gone either way. They've found ways to get it done. Darius Johnson stop and pop. And it's a 15-10 lead. Student body is packed in here at Edition Financial Arena. And a really nice shot right there from Darius Johnson, able to make that tough two. But if you're the Houston Cougars, you're not going to overreact to that shot. Why? That's a tough 17-foot pull-up jump shot. Those are the shots you want to force teams to take. Damian Dunn, his first shot comes off. And we got a foul underneath. I believe they're going to get Diallo as Francis was trying to get position. And see, we call this good defense, good offense, right? Nice on-ball defense right there from LJ Cryer. Gets a hand up, good contest. Better shot right there from Darius Johnson making the pull-up. 17 footer. How about the season Darius Johnson has put together over 17 in his last nine games? So the junior out of Boyd's, Maryland, the godson of Johnny Dawkins, mm -hmm. having a really nice campaign. And you know, the more important number for Johnson is Javier Francis unable to convert inside. The well, ball is ripped. Knights lucky they're not called for the foul there. And Marcellus Avery now contributing to UCF. Johnson, little step back this time. Inside to Diallo. Brought it low. Cougars were able to rip it away. And I think we're going to get a foul here. They're going to get Diallo, who's scrambling for it, on the floor. It looks like a foul, but the more concerning thing is it looks like Jawan Roberts is holding that right hand of his as he got down there in that skirmish with Diallo. You're going to see he gets his hand in there as he goes to the ground. Looks like his wrist maybe got stuck underneath. So clearly shaken up. Mentioned the wrist. He had seven stitches placed in that wrist earlier this season. So Juwan Roberts feeling it right now. Yeah. He's playing with that wrist wrap. Something he hasn't had to deal with all season. So this entire first half would be a bit of adjustment for him. Almost similar to a football player has to wear that club. You gotta get used to it. Yep, happened in that Oklahoma game on Saturday. As the Cougars go downstairs once again. Nice soft touch that time, Jawan Roberts. I love his hands. <laughs> Jawan Roberts is so good finishing with that left hand right there. Stretch that hook out to about seven feet. Hardly even put his right hand on the basketball. The Knights adjustment has to be is make him use the right hand. Another one comes off. Fired up by Avery. And this is Shed. Shed trying to find some real estate along the baseline. Here's Emmanuel Sharp off balance. He's off the mark. And it'll be tipped out of bounds. Once again, pointing to UCF. And watch Jawan Roberts use only the left hand. One hand on the ball still. Going to go into his motion. Touch it for a second. One dribble, two dribble. Up with the left again. It's an incredible move for a player to essentially know his right hand is compromised and still finish up over the top of C.J. Walker with just his left. Now, flip side to that is, as a defender, how about you get on that left-hand side, force him to go back to the right hand, because more than ever, even though he's a lefty, he really is not comfortable using the right hand tonight. Oh, he is grabbing that yeah. thing right now, clearly in some pain. And hey, it's late in the season. I don't think anybody is 100%, right? No, you know, he's playing through it. He's toughing it out. And not only is he giving a good effort, he's being effective and productive. Darius Johnson beyond the three-point line, and it goes down. And right there, good UCF offense forcing the miscommunication by the Houston defense leads to the open Darius Johnson three-pointer. Player movement and body movement so important against the Houston Cougars if you want to get good looks. A tough move there by Shed, and he'll be fouled. You see, 
this dribble weave right here going through right here Emmanuel Sharp and Jamal Shedd just unable to figure out are we switching are we staying are we switching are we staying leads to Darius Johnson being open anytime you can get those switches those movements defenses have to communicate early loud and often to make sure they know who's matched up with him so here's Jamal Shedd at the line just named one of five finalists for the Bob Cousy Award, awarded yes. to the nation's best point guard. Yeah, Jamal Shedd has been sensational all season long. We can talk about his numbers, we can talk about the accolades that are most definitely coming his way. But for me, being a former point guard, what I admire the most is a situation like this last play. It's a six-point game. He, UCF with a big time shot, crowd gets into it. What does Jamal Shedd do? He gets to the free throw line, makes a big play to calm his team down, right? People look at point guards and think it's all about the numbers, assists, no. A big part of being an exceptional point guard is knowing the moment and having a pulse on your team. Well said. Here comes that trap now, Cougars. I've got it bottled up in the corner. It's a great nice. trap. Trying to get it out of there and somehow they do. Right back, Johnson goes for another. He is feeling it right now. Largest lead for the Knights in seven. UCF at the bottom of the Big 12 at three-point field goal percentage. That's why we're seeing a bit of those short closeouts from the Houston Cougars. But like anything, any game plan, you always got to be ready to adjust. Shed just calmly gets to his spot and scores. And that's another example of the moment right there. As Emmanuel Sharp's able to knock that ball out of bounds. He knows the moment. 21-16. Quite a moment tonight here inside Edition Financial Arena. Dar Point guards battling here tonight. Darius Johnson on one side, Jamal Shedd on the other. UCF 15 and 13 on the year, hovering around 500, but they're a better team than that. That's the consensus feeling around the conference. Absolutely. Well, even when we spoke with Coach Sampson today, he said, listen, UCF has a lot of length, got a lot of size. They make it really challenging to find good looks on the offensive end. Oh, C.J. Walker bringing down the house. Just a really nice empty side ball screen right there from UCF. That allows C.J. to roll directly to the basket, and this entire Houston defense is on the other side of the floor. It's a good play call from Coach Johnny Dawkins. Let's see how the Cougars answer. Roberts. Iso. He is a tough mark. Oh, what a move. Yeah. Just no panic whatsoever. Yeah. That's what the best teams do. And you, and you know what they say, Drew. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Juwan Roberts, you keep going to that left hand until somebody decides to stop you. Smart basketball. Walker matching it. He is fired up right now in that matchup. Yeah. It's the best start C.J. Walker's had to the game all season for UCF. Stolen away, Sellers and Allen into the front court. Oh, Walker's the trailer. He was bumped from behind. 25-18. You see, look at this naked side ball screen. No one from Houston rotates over. You see Javier Francis stuck, sticking to his man. That's his rotation, but a big-time hammer and finish from C.J. Walker up top. If you don't meet Scott Walker early, he is going to take off. Had a chance to spend some moments with you before this basketball game. We'll have that interview, from what I understand, at halftime. Can't wait to, <laughs> to watch that. It's B.J. with C.J. As Darius Johnson, again it comes off, Knights with another chance. Darius drops it down low. Tough spot for Omar Payne, and he has it poked away. And right now, Houston has to increase their physicality, something I'm surprised I'm having to say. But right now, UCF is playing with a little more toughness and a little more force. Houston's got to be the team they've been all season long. Jamal Shedd can't hit. Sellers. And I believe he touched it last. Let's see. Yep, they're going to say it is Houston basketball. It's a good play by Emmanuel Sharp that time. Securing the basketball was an issue against Iowa State. So far, the ball control has looked much better on the night side against this Cougar pressure. You see right here, it looks like Jalen Sellers wants to get his hand on it. But then a great play by Emmanuel Sharp to come in and throw the ball off. 
of Sellers. But those are the kind of plays it seems like Houston always wins. 50-50 balls are 50-50 balls when you play Houston. They're more like 80-20 balls, 80 in favor of Houston, because they're going to go after it and go get it. And now here's Shet. Got DeMar Lankford on him. Roberts cross court in the corner, camping out. Just off the mark that time for Damian Dunn. Damian Dunn, a 38% three-point shooter in conference play. It's a good look for Houston on that end of the floor. Jalen Sellers now wants Diallo. Diallo's got to deal with that double team. Allen. Sellers, top of the key. So far, Houston, BJ, 0 for 7, shooting the three-point shot. Oh, what a take by Shed. Just nasty off the glass. Just a great change of direction right there. Able to shift Shamari Allen's balance to the left side. Goes back to his right hand and finishes through the contact. That's why Jamal Shed has been arguably the best point guard in the Big 12. And he is the undisputed leader of this team. Oh, Emmanuel Sharp again sticks the hand in. And it goes off a night. And watch the way Jamal Shedd as he pushes in transition. Puts this ball in the left hand, look away, then gets back to that right hand against DeMar Langford and gets the shot up off the glass before the shot blocker comes over. And then Emmanuel Sharp has been fighting very hard on the defensive end. I hope that inspires some of his teammates to come along and play harder to front and keep that basketball out of these UCF post hands. Sharp playing great defense thus far. He has not scored, though, for the Cougars. Roberts leads the way with 10 points. Here's Shedd again. Getting in the lane. Right now, Jamal Shedd looks like Tim Hardaway out there back in the day. Has he stop and go? You see me now, you don't? <laughs> yes, sir, Jamal Shedd. And when you start with the Houston Cougars and the fact that they've come into this league in one season and already with a chance to win the league is absolutely exceptional. And then obviously UCF bringing the Orlando market is so great for this league. And then you can never sleep on the Cincinnati Bearcats and what they've been in the past. So all three schools have been outstanding for the Big 12. As LJ Cryer seems like maybe he can get off the schneid a little bit. Cryer comes out of the timeout firing. That is a big one. You see the Houston faithful making some noise here in Orlando. And that cuts the lead to two. Yeah, well, only the first three-point make for the Houston Cougars today, LJ Cryer. The best shooter for Houston, got to get him going. Oh, Sellers trying to go glass. Coach Kelvin Sampson so good with his out-of-bound plays, OB unders as we call them in the basketball community right there, able to shoot LJ Cryer out to the corner for the open triple. UCF unable to identify him. Had a chance to watch that walkthrough this morning from Houston. They run that over and over and over again, and that is why right there, it's like Blackburn. Absolutely, and those plays are rehearsed over and over. Obviously, you know, you come out to a game, you watch a game, come out, watch your team, you think, ah, they ran that play, you know, one or two times. No, you go through these things over and over and over again so that when the opposing team makes a mistake, you are ready to make them pay for it. And nobody draws up side out of bounds, the OB unders better than Coach Kelvin Sampson. So Sellers converts on two, and the lead is four. Some UCF pressure here. Roberts resets. Left open again, LJ Cryer. Can't make it two in a row. Oh, good job into the hands of Wilson. Cryer going to get another opportunity. Shed right back to his backcourt mate. And it is money. I give a lot of credit to Malik Wilson for creating that second chance opportunity. And when you give LJ Cryer, a shooter of his caliber, a second look, most likely he's going to knock it down. Those two guys have a great relationship. Yep. Shed and Cryer from Cryer's days at Baylor. Once rivals, now so excited to be on the same team. Allen left it short. to be tapped out for the Knights. And LJ Cryer comes into this game off of 23 points, 5 of 9 from the three-point line against Oklahoma. So we expect it, but right here, look at the way LJ Cryer gets up off it. Jamal Shedd finds him again. The extra pass to find your teammate so crucial in basketball. No one does it better than Jamal Shedd. Now one of the most high-impact transfers in the country this like, season. It looked like what could have been a travel right there from C.J. Walker. Good defense from Damian Dunn. Sellers, that vintage spin move. 
He's fouled again. So tough to guard a guy yeah. left-handed like that, BJ, with that wicked spin move, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what it is. When, when Jalen Sellers does that spin move, watch him. He spins directly downhill, right? He doesn't spin outwards away from the basket. He keeps his defender directly on his back because he's spinning right at the rim. Think about it as a defender. What do you do when a guy spins right where you're standing? All you can do is retreat and essentially foul. You know, the best offensive players know and understand how to put defenders in compromising positions. So Jalen Sellers has been a gem. Averages 16 a game here this year. Another year of eligibility. He's out of Columbus, Georgia. Rattles in the second one, and it's 29-26. UCF has led pretty much the entire way here. Yep. Whip it downstairs. Down near that baseline, and it'll stay with Houston. Francis yeah. tried to make a move, lost it, and I think Houston lucky there. Yeah, with a quick and active hands from C.J. Walker. Let's see if this ball goes off the knee of Javier Francis. It definitely goes off his left foot, out of bounds, but it looks like this basketball is going to retain, be retained as Houston possession. You heard there the crowd realized it yeah. as they watched it on the big screen. Sweeping shot in the lane, and I think because of that missed call, they don't get a call right there for Houston. Yeah, yeah. Officials, I think, realized it. These things usually work themselves out. <laughs> now it's Diallo. Again, backing in, but traveled. Just took a little bit too long that time to make his move. Yeah, well, and, and Diallo wanted to get too close to the basket. He already had... Juwan Roberts pinned pretty deep under the hoop. He's just got to go up over his left shoulder and throw the little four-foot hook. Look at the turnover story. Points off turnovers in favor of the Cougars. Under two minutes now left to play in the first half. And, you know, as uncommon as of a half as this bench for Houston, not very efficient offensively. They've allowed UCF to shoot better than 50% from the field. Only down three. Sellers. Tried to elevate. They're going to get a blocking call. Well, that's a tough, tough play right there on both sides. Yeah. Salt Dunn trying to get back. And right here, Jamal Shedd just unable to fit that ball into Roberts. And then Jalen Sellers does what he always does is go directly at that basket. A guy that never looks to avoid contact, go through contact. Damian Dunn unable to get set early enough to draw the charge. I mentioned going downhill. Man, this guy really yeah. goes downhill. Yeah, he was like a rocket to the rim. You know, once he makes his mind up to get there, you see something's going to happen. Either he's going to finish or he's going to give it all he got trying to go through somebody to make a play at the cup. But that all was predicated off of a Houston turnover. Now, five turnovers for Houston, only three assists in this half. Well, a couple misses there for the Ball State transfer. And UCF now 7 of 11 at the line here in this first half. Three-point game. Number one Houston taking on an unranked UCF squad trying to prove that they are worthy here on senior night. Yeah, just not really an opening there for Damian Dunn. Looked like a play where he already had his mind made up to let that ball go before he received it. Shamari Allen. And we're going to get an offensive foul here. I believe Diallo with an illegal screen that time. You know, officiating crews all around. And Sampson, what a program he has put together. 82 straight weeks in the top 25. That is the best in all of college basketball. Hard to believe Houston has never won a national championship, BJ. But you got to figure it's just a matter of time. A absolutely. And I played against Coach Kelvin Sampson his first year when he got to Houston. And you talk about a, a somebody that's built this program from the ground up. It's exactly what he's done. We've known about the history Houston has as a basketball program back in the day. But in recent memory, they were not a highly touted program. But he has completely erased that with what he's been able to do. Great interior passing and the finish by Francis. That is how you share the basketball. Yeah, well, UCF likes to go to that zone to show a different look to teams. But Houston, very decisive. Get the ball to the middle. Force either a kick out, dunk down. Right there, Houston makes the right read. Final 30 seconds here. 10-second differential shot and game clock. 
Darius Johnson will take it strong. Block, but puts it right back up. Good second effort. Yeah, it's a nice job of Darius Johnson being aggressive going to the cup, but no Houston resistance right there. Very surprising. LJ Cryer has it knocked away. Final seconds here. It's Walker at the gun. Off the front of the rim. Great effort by the Knights. They are feeling it on senior night as they head to the locker room, leading by three. Big time half from UCF doing what they want to do on senior day. Now Kansas at the Fertitta Center. That's coming up this Saturday, so they've got that to deal with. But first things first, they've got their hands full right now in this next 20 minutes. Yeah, well, UCF played with more fight. They played with more passion, and they played with more tenacity in the first half. So we're going to find out which team, if UCF is able to continue that push, or if Houston comes out and says, listen, it's a reason why we've been the best team in the Big 12 all league play. Tripped up here to start. LJ Cryer hits the deck. And Jalen Sellers called for the foul. So that's foul number one on Jalen. And the Cougars now inbound underneath. This has been a fun matchup to watch. Diallo trying to guard Roberts. Sent out. And shot just a little bit long. Oh, Diallo can't squeeze it. Houston has the basketball. Well, two mistakes right there from UCF. Darius Johnson loses Jamal Shedd, and then Ibrahim and Diallo unable to secure the defensive rebound. Lucky to not have that turn into worse. Here's the home run. Sellers out of the pack. How about that look by Shamari Allen? Shamari Allen, such an underrated passer at the two guard position. Had a game earlier this season against Texas where he put up 17 points and seven assists. More than capable. Pryor just came off. Allen and the Knights. Two on one now. Shamari Allen to the cup. Good start for UCF here in half number two. And UCF continuing their stellar play from the first half. Stolen away. Allen. Tried to go to the goal, had it knocked away just in time. Great hands that time by Shed. Now Emmanuel Sharp. I think Emmanuel Sharp has got to get it going for the Cougars. He has not scored thus far. Darius Johnson whistled as he fouls from behind. But you see right there, Jawan Roberts unable to hold on to that basketball. Definitely a foul against Darius Johnson, but that's a play where when, when he's completely healthy, he catches that basketball, goes up, and finishes above the rim. That hand, man, give him a lot of credit for toughing it out tonight, playing through that injury, because playing with seven stitches in your hand is extremely challenging. Yeah, that hand just kind of dangling. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Shed looking for the screen. Johnson stuck to him like glue. He backs off, though, and Shed will take advantage. Got to hit that shot on the road. Knights can't grab it. Houston will have another chance. Yeah, and that's kind of been Jamal Shedd's only weakness throughout this season. They're only shooting about 29% from three-point land in conference play. Capable of making them at times, but certainly not the strong suit of his game. Saw the offensive rebounding story. 11-5 to in favor of the visiting team. Pierce Cryer, it's good. Three-pointer for L.J. Cryer. Now that's a guy that Houston wants taking a three-point shot. L.J. Cryer can get it going in a hurry. They're really going to need that lift right now without Emmanuel Sharp figuring out a way to be effective in this game. Diallo put it low. That's not where he wants the ball as he tries to dig it out of there, and it'll be a jump ball. And he'll stay with the home team. Take one more look at that Cryer three. And you see the little flare screen right there from Juwan Roberts. Allows LJ Cryer to make a nice basketball play. Puts it down one time and gets into his rhythm step back. Once again, it feels like UCF's outplayed Houston by like 10 plus points. But this is only a four point ball game. Staying with the Knights. 20 seconds will be on the shot clock here. Darius Johnson bringing out the full arsenal of offense here tonight. Remember, he struggled on Saturday in the first half against Iowa State. Had a better second half tonight, playing much more consistent. 
and you hit it on the head, you've got to remain consistent in his aggression, making plays, and for him, taking care of the basketball, as Shamari Allen was, was unable to do on that last possession. Good defensive stand there by the Cougars. Here's Cryer. Emmanuel Sharp, back in the Sunshine State, Great where he pass. played his high school basketball. Comes off. Francis with another chance. Out to Cryer. He can't cash in. Diallo trying to chase it down. And the Cougars will have possession. Oh, the Knights just cannot squeeze it. And that's Houston. That's Houston basketball, right? You've got to give them a lot of credit for always going to the glass and competing the way they do. What a terrific block right here by Ibrahima Diallo. It looked like it was going to be an easy finish for Javier Francis, but the shot blocks leader in the Big 12 showing exactly why. So Diallo heads out of the game. Johnny Dawkins talking to him right now on the sideline. And Johnson comes up with another steal as he knocks it away from Sharp. Here's Sellers. Little stutter step right to the goal. And we've got another Cougar down close to the UCF bench. Well, this Houston team tonight in the last ball, he did not talk like a coach that he was like he was comfortable right now in that number one spot. He is not letting anybody rest on their well, laurels. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret, Drew. The best coaches are never comfortable. Until they hoist that trophy at the end of the season, then they let out a little bit of relief. But until then, what Coach Simpson gave us in terms of, hey, we still got a lot of things we got to get better at. This is not a perfect team. We can improve in a lot of areas. That's why they've been one of the best teams in the country. It's not about getting complacent. It's about continuing to get better each and every day. No time to enjoy that view right at the no top. No question. They're in the thick of it right now. They're going after it. So Wilson is into the game. He's only six foot two. They lose Francis, who's six foot eight, much smaller right now with the Cougars. Right back up though, and Jawan Roberts draws the contact and a chance now with a three-point play. And a, bit, a bit of a broken play here as Emmanuel Sharp gets in the paint. It's actually knocked out of his hands by DeMar Langford, but it ends up in who? Jawan Roberts' hands to finish on the left side of the rim. A lot of poise, a lot of patience right here. Watch this ball fake. Gets C.J. Walker up in the air, goes through the contact. So many times we see players rush that play, right? They get the basketball, Jim, like, I got to go up and score right now. No. Juan Roberts sees it, throw a ball fake out of shot blocker, finish for the end one. Roberts short, but able to run it down. Cougars trailing by four now. Jamal Shedd. UCF has given up too many second and third chances yeah. in the second half. LJ Cryer, strong. Nice move. Yeah. And LJ Cryer starting to percolate, Drew, right? We're starting to see him get it going. Lead score for the Houston Cougars, doing what he does. And I like now Houston goes to a 2 3 zone because they're so small. Biggest player on the floor, Juwan Roberts at 6 7, showing the UCF a little zone. Johnson puts it up. Looking for a roll that time, not going to get it. It's out of bounds, though. The Knights will have it as we come to our first officials timeout here in the second half. LJ Cryer, the senior from Katy, Texas, swelling from flaring up. Trust me, tomorrow it's going to be a lot of swelling, but hopefully well, he's back on the bench now. It's a good sign for the Houston Cougars. And it laced that thing up with just a little bit tighter. Yeah. Oh, some cool kicks, by the way. Did you notice the fact that there's the Houston logo really on the top? Nice. nice. Well, Houston, one of the teams also that sports the Jumpman. Yeah. Gear. Mm -hmm. The great one. Shamari Allen here for UCF. Drew Felios, BJ Taylor. So excited you're with us. Our phenomenal ESPN crew also bringing you the action tonight as CJ Walker elevates. And he's got free throws coming up. And this is a product of the depth missing for Houston. They're not used to sending that double team and those being the players that have to rotate on the backside. That time it was Malik Wilson who has to shift down to C.J. Walker. Typically throughout the season for Houston, they've always had Javier Francis, Jawan Roberts, or JoJo Tugler. Two of those three in the game at the same time. Now the rotations get a little bit different, right? And all it takes is a split second of hesitation for Yusef to exploit it like they did on that previous play. C.J. Walker extra aggressive tonight offensively. I think you made a great point too, B.J., about his career here at UCF. He's learned how to play even when he's not 100%. Yeah. Got to get in there and help your team. He's done a great job doing that this year. Exactly. Well, C.J. Walker's had to deal with a lot of adversity throughout his career, but he's bounced back and continued to be an effective player. 
for UCF. Darius Johnson now looking for Walker. Kind of threw his hands up in the air. Thought Walker was pushed from behind as yep. Emmanuel Sharp was trying to stay with him. Yep, and, and that's one of the plays right there we're talking about sometimes with Darius Johnson where as a point guard, as the lead guard, you just can't make those plays, right? You have got to be secure and extremely safe with the basketball when you're a player, when you're a high-level point guard. Houston has been playing uphill this entire night thus far. Here's Cryer. Sharp still trying to get on track, and there That's it is. Look. Yep. The first points for the sophomore making his return to the Sunshine State. That's his look right there, Emmanuel Sharp. LJ Cryer on a ball screen. Sharp shakes up to that wing area extended for his catch and shoot triple. So Houston needed that big time. Back to work for the Knights. Diallo, a little hesitation. Scores in the lane. Yeah. I believe Diallo got away with a little bit of a walk right there. It looked like he may have dragged that pivot foot, but nevertheless patient enough to score up over the top of the Houston defense. Cross-court pass now. Jamal Shedd, quick first step. Able to switch it over to that left hand and draw foul. Watch as LJ Cryer comes off this ball screen at the top of the creek. He's going to put Darius Johnson in a bind over there at the right-hand side of your screen. Emmanuel Sharp, one of the best catching shooters on the Houston Cougars. See that way? Darius Johnson had to sag down, puts him in a bind, closing out against a shooter with the range like Emmanuel Sharp has. Had a great high school career, prep career, played alongside Dylan Mitchell, superstar for the Texas Longhorns. Yep, both those guys, both Emmanuel Sharp and Dylan Mitchell, a part of the AAU program, coached by a guy who used to coach me and Sean Campbell. He's very affectionate about both of these guys and has enjoyed watching them both play at their Texas schools. And BJ, I know I'm dating you just a little bit, but I used to enjoy Emmanuel's father, Derek Sharp, when yeah. he played at the University of South Florida. Yeah. What a shooter yeah. he was back in the day playing for Bobby Pascal. As this one comes out, and UCF now with the basketball, the lead is three. Crowd emotional from the get-go. And Houston decides to stay in this 2-3 zone. Here's Silla going hard, and he takes it right at Jawan Roberts and draws two. Well, the entry right there, too easy for Tiano Silla. Once he receives the basketball, just little resistance from the Houston defense and who was supposed to match up with him at the, line at the line. rim. So Tierno Silla, seven foot sophomore now to the line, and BJ's had an interesting role for this Knights team this year. It's the guy who comes in for a few minutes, does some great work, but he's also been ejected for a few games as well. He's kind of that guy who's not afraid to sacrifice himself for the club, literally. Yeah, well, Tierno Silla is a guy, when he comes in the game, you got to, UCF pretty much has to figure out which way it's going to go, All right? Is Tierno Silla on his game today? If he is, it's great for UCF. If he's not, usually they go in a different direction. But the one thing you can count on with Tierno Silla is that he's going to play hard each and every single night out. There's no lack of effort with that guy. Was ejected against Kansas and OU. Good news, UCF won both of those games. Yeah, well, so there's no lack of effort and fight, both literally and figuratively. Absolutely. <laughs> Four-point game. Right now, this Houston offense taking a long time to figure out what they want to get into. Oh, good screen roll. Shed with a gorgeous delivery to Francis. It almost just lulled the UCF defense to sleep right there, didn't they? Wasn't a lot of movement on that possession, but Juwan Roberts runs up and slips out for the easy finish at the rim. It was Francis, actually, that time. Francis. Javier Francis, yeah. And it looks like that ankle is okay, BJ. Good news for the Cougars. He, he rolls up pretty good right there on that, on that slam, huh? I think so. <laughs> Johnson measuring things now. Oh, had this one swat away. Great defensive play. The ankle's good for Javier Francis. You get a dunk on one end, block at the other end. He's feeling good. Shed. Going to get the benefit of the doubt this time as Ray Natili makes the call. And watch how Francis comes up to set this ball screen. He's going to immediately get out of there quick. Watch this screen, and then he's out of there. Omar Payne stays up handling the ball screen. He's got to stay attached. And then right here, Javier Francis is able to come over 
for a block on the other end, so it's good to see that he's feeling well. Cryer. Oh, what a put back. Xavier Francis taking over the game right now for the Cougars. The way he's playing, maybe all Xavier Francis needed was a breather. Got himself in a little three-minute stretch there to sit out. Guys come back rejuvenated. Tied at 42 now. Crowd getting behind their Knights. Johnson with 10 seconds to shoot. A little out of control this yeah, time. Yeah, and that's the second time that is Johnson's driven into the paint with really nowhere to go. Houston Law. Right here, Javier Francis able to get here on the offensive glass. Meet the ball up top and finish it back up and in. Take it from a guy that's had a lot of ankle injuries. His ankle's going to be pretty sore tomorrow, but tonight he's going to leave it all out there for his Houston Cougars. Cougars trying to take their first lead tonight. They score here. They'll have it. Shed looking to Roberts. Instead, he'll take it himself. Jamal Shed for three. And the Cougars lead. Timeout Knights. Johnny Dawkins wants to talk things over. And how about the emergence of the number one team in the land? The Houston Cougars is doing exactly what we expected. Jamal Shedd said, you know, sag off me like that. There was the Pittsburgh Steelers as the best receiver in the NFL. Obviously, we know he went on to win a Super Bowl down in Tampa Bay near you. Playing with Tom Brady, so... UCF in the Big 12 doing big things. Also got to mention Houston plays Kansas on ESPN. That is Saturday, senior day for the Cougars at the Fortita Center, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Looking forward to that. But here, again, the Cougars, business to take care of beforehand. They lead by just three. Jalen Sellers bumped by Emmanuel Sharp as he made his move. So 11 and a half minutes left to play in the game. Sharp has gotten involved. The Cougars need his pre here in the second half. He's really been the catalyst for Houston being able to make this push and take the lead. Javier Francis averages five points a game. Very active, though. Always good for a couple of blocks a game as well. As Knights inbound it now to Diallo. Near midway through the second half. Ibrahima Diallo hit. And the call made right there, and we're going to get Francis on the foul. That'd just be a second foul, though. So in the act of shooting, Ibrahima heads to the free throw line now for UCF. When, when you watch Ibrahima Diallo, BJ, does it remind you just a little bit of Taco Fall? I think that Diallo does things on the defensive end that are reminiscent of Taco. Right, the ability to obviously protect the rim, man the rim, be a force in the paint. I believe Taco was the leader in shot blocks when we in the American Conference. Is now Ibrahima Diallo's the leader in blocks per game in the Big 12. The thing that Ibrahima Diallo brings is he's more mobile out on the perimeter to guard those ball screens. Obviously, not just the intimidating presence that Taco was. Taco was one of a kind in that respect. But Ibrahima Diallo has a little bit more agility, a little more lateral movement, which makes him a more versatile defender. 58% from the line is Diallo as he gets one of two there. Two-point lead now for the Cougars. Houston heating up four of their last five field goals they have made. Cryer shaking free. Can't get the bounce. Diallo can't squeeze it. Oh, crowd a little frustrated. UCF having a hard time reeling in that basketball. And this is why. Second chance points. Now 18 to 6 in favor of Houston. That was the 16th offensive rebound today for the Houston Cougars. And you're going to see right here, everyone's going to look at Ibrahima Diallo like, we need to come down with that ball. That wasn't his man that created that sequence. That was Jawan Roberts who came in and tipped that ball. Right? So, so many times when you're playing Houston, you might see the center underneath the rim. And you're looking at him going, well, why didn't he come up with the rebound? Well, it was probably a three or a four man, not his matchup, that flew in to create the second chance opportunity. Tough news for UCF now as Darius Johnson's got to go to the bench. He's got four fouls. So Johnny Dawkins will look to DeMar Langford to take his place. And DeMar Langford's a guy who's been playing some backup point guard. 
in concert with Shamari Allen when Darius Johnson goes out of the game. I would expect to see Houston heat UCF a little bit more without their primary ball handler on the floor. UCF doesn't have a lot of playmaking to start, but especially without Johnson on the floor. Pryor now with 13 points for the Cougars. Walker hands to Sellers. Walker will fire for three. Well, that offensive game is polished tonight. Yeah, and that was really nice action from UCF, able to get the ball screen with C.J. Walker popping, but again, an uncharacteristic miscommunication from this Houston defense. Cryer again, the runner this time. Finds the bottom. L.J. Cryer wanted a bigger role on a championship team. Won a title in his yeah. first year at Baylor. But came to Houston to be a bigger part in things. And he has an opportunity here in the next month. Yeah, well, it just seems like Houston always has an answer, right? And it feels like UCF big-time plays C.J. Walker, three-pointer, gets the crowd into it. Houston always has that answer. That time it was the L.J. Cryer floater in the lane. Diallo trapped. Trying to get it out of there. Walker comes to get it. Sellers now will fire. Couldn't tee this one up. Here's Wilson now. And, and Drew, UCF's in a bit of an danger zone right here. Houston's starting to take control of this game. They've got to make a play as they did right there. There it is. Walker, the recipient, was about to elevate that time if he could have squeezed it, and he knows it. Well, he's just had a different way about him tonight, BJ. I think. After tonight, he's going to want to sit down for more pregame interviews with you in the future. Well, because I'll I, I tell you what, I'm not taking credit for it. All right? <laughs> this is all C.J. Walker. He's come out like a man on a mission tonight. Tipped out that time by Francis as we're under 10 minutes here. So Francis with eight, Cryer with 15. Roberts has 12 for the visiting Cougars. UCF, it's Walker with 13 leading the way. Well, just threw that away that time. Poor pass by Langford. And that is what hurts you with Johnson yeah. going to the bench. Yep. Well, and each and every possession is going to be extremely valuable down the stretch here. This we're getting to that under 10 now, Drew. Where, yeah, coaches will tell you every possession matters, and they do. But once you get closer and closer to that eight-minute mark, they really start to be of utmost importance. After the runner by Cryer now. See the turnover story. Five-point game. Walker trying to get it to Diallo. It's knocked out off the hands of Diallo. And we'll take one more look at the Cryer bucket. And, and LJ Cryer starting to find some success in this little mid-range area, right? See that little 10-foot floater? Every guard has to have that shot in its arsenal because it's a big time play it's just easy off the glass right you beat you shoot the shot before the defense rotates over because you don't have to deal with that shot blocker at the rim we call that the in-between game he's got it quick break now for Cryer. do not expect him to sit very long trying to get a win before that stretch run here and 11 points in the second half a pretty quiet first half from lj Cryer. but what else would you expect from a young man who's been as good as he's been all season long. And BJ, he's averaged 39 minutes the last three games. You gotta think that this Houston team a little bit winded here late in the season, coming to Florida tonight. But this is where you dig deep. And you're the number one team in the land. Everybody taking shots at you night in and night out. Yeah, and man. you just find a way to win. Oh uh, yeah, Houston's not making any excuses. They're they're one of the most mentally tough ball clubs in all of college basketball. They're not worried about a little fatigue, Drew. Jamal Shedd. That lead growing to five for the Cougars. And a foul. Drawn once more. So Marcellus Avery. This time had a lot of foul calls here in the second half as teams repeatedly getting to the strike. Which is very under control right here from Jamal Shedd. You're going to see again, he stops early. Doesn't have to deal with the shot blocker at the rim. Is going to get up into that eight, nine foot floater. So many times you can draw a foul on a play like that because it almost catches your defender off guard. He's anticipating you going all the way to the rim. When you go for that quick stop and pop eight feet from the cup, he almost instinctively just throws his hand out there and reaches. We'll see Jamal Shedd. Six assists tonight. 
And you look at what he's done in his career. He's third all-time in assists at the University of Houston. 637 coming into this game, so 643 right now. Yeah. That is a number to be proud of. Well, and right now, Houston's starting to take control of this game. Right? We're seeing them get the looks they want to get on the offensive end. The ball is in Jamal Shedd's hand. LJ Cryer's getting good looks. And UCF, without Darius Johnson leading their backcourt, they're struggling to find their playmaking. And again, don't get me wrong, UCF's not a great playmaking team when Johnson is on the floor. So without him, it becomes even more of a struggle. Avery puts it on the floor. See what I mean? That's five on the clock, Drew, and it's just been an extremely stagnant possession. Sellers got to let it go. Shot clock violation on the Knights. And once again, a defensive stand by the Cougars. When that guy's on the bench, this UCF offense just does not run like a well-oiled machine. 52 four. So we've had some activity during the break. A little double technical foul right there going nose to nose. Yeah. Looked like Omar Payne that time involved. Yeah. And also Damian Dunn. Uh, you know, I never liked those plays. I never understood why guys do that because it's not like y'all are going to do anything. They're just going to throw down at midcourt, you know? So just go to your bench. This is just silly on both sides. The dust is cleared, though. It's a six-point game, 52-46. Knight's got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. Jamal Shedd. Three to shoot. Here's Dunn. Baseline. Little floater. This one comes out. One. And Darius Johnson now back into the game for UCF. It's go time for number three. Another opportunity lost by the Knights. Johnny Dawkins is up running around on that bench. Yeah, a pretty good attack right there from Darius Johnson. It's a tough contest from the Houston defense, unable to convert. But that's when UCF's had some of their most success, pushing that ball out in transition before that Houston Cougar defense is able to set up. Saw the lull in UCF, BJ, when, when Johnson went to the bench. So even with those fouls, you yeah. got to have him right here, right now. Yeah. Pressure now by the Knights. A little full court man-to-man, -man and a foul's going to be called. Oh, I don't like that call. Uh, and the UCF bench was already pretty upset that there wasn't a foul call on the Johnson drive. You're going to see right here is this ball's inbounded to Malik Wilson. You're going to get a hard swipe down there from Jalen Sellers. As you're going to see right here, once he receives the basketball, watch Sellers swipe down and get some of that arm. What UCF has to do now, somebody on that court has to take leadership. Somebody has to rally his troops, get his guys together and say, hey, we're down six to the number one, one team in the country. We're in a good place. Let's go out here and play the last seven minutes like the last 33 didn't happen. But somebody has to be in a position to do that. You've said it throughout, BJ. Time and place. Right now is that time for UCF. Lankford comes and gets it from the elbow. Now makes his move. Johnson will fire away a deep three. And an offensive foul going to be called. I believe they're going to get Tierno Silla. To make up for it. It'll be Houston ball, though. So Jamal Shedd to inbound. Full court man-to-man -man here from the Knights. Rather, it's just a simple press. L.J. Cryer, he's picked it up offensively. 17 points, he leads all scores. And this is where Houston gets really tough, right? When they have a lead like this, they're one of the best at getting the shot they want late with less than eight on the shot clock. Shed will take the shot. Oh, it rattles in. The friendly roll on the road never hurts. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Houston is able to run that clock down to about eight, put the ball in their leader's hands and allow him to make a play. Big time shot from Jamal Shedd. Here's Shamari Allen. He'll take it. How about the follow? Tierno Silla. He gets up quickly and throws it down. And a really smart play right there from Jamal Shedd. You notice how patient he was taking that basketball out of bounds? 
people don't realize the shot clock runs, excuse me, the game clock runs no matter how long it takes you to inbound the ball. So just a little subtle game within the game move right there from Shed. Oh, great move. Shed's move, not this time. When Houston is led at this point in the game, they're 26 and oh, they have not lost in the last span. There when they had the lead at this point. Interesting stat there from Greg Pike, our producer. And we've got, see, Allen was trying to get position that time, and I believe a foul. Right here, Jamal Shedd is able to get his rhythm. Hesitation triple up over Jamal Langford. In time like this, this is what you're going to do. You're going to put the ball in a guy like Jamal Shedd's hand and say, hey, lead us to the promised land. That shot off by Sellers. And Houston now in the driver's seat with five minutes to play. Drew Felios alongside B.J. Taylor. Senior night on campus here for the UCF Knights and a golden opportunity. But Houston, stingy on the road, the number one team in the nation. And right now, their offense starting to move pretty smoothly. Jawan Roberts fouled that time as he went to the cup. You see the constant screen roll from yeah. the Cougars. Another thing they were practicing consistently in the shoot around this morning, and they just run it to perfection. And that's a play where if you run it perfectly, BJ, yep. no matter what defense you're playing, it's tough to stop. Well, one of the keys to a great pick and roll is great chemistry, right? And when you only play the limited number of guys that Houston has to play now, what do you have? Great chemistry because those guys are always on the floor together, right? And even with the hand, the one hand that Jawan Roberts has had tonight, it has not impacted his production. Again, that, that hand's dangling. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't imagine. He receives the basketball with just the left, only uses the right hand for a slight guide, and then goes up and shoots. Yeah, clearly yeah. affecting his shot. Not much support there. Yeah. So this game's still within range for the Knights. Straight up man-to-man -man here for the Cougars. Jalen Sellers wants to make a move. Walker will fire away. He's had a good night, but not this time. Fresh 20. Samari Allen fouled. They're going to get Emmanuel Sharp. Nice defense right there from Emmanuel Sharp. He just reached in at the end. That'll be his fourth foul. So foul starting to become a real issue here for the Cougars. Remember, this is not a very deep team here tonight on the road as Wilson's going to check in for the sophomore Sharp. And then Sharp just didn't need the reach right there, Drew. We saw him get over there and cut Shamari Allen off. It's a little bit of a lazy, undisciplined reach there at the end of the play. Shamari Allen good on the first foul shot. Sharp a little bit upset on the bench for Houston. Johnny Dawkins wishes this guy at the line, Shamari Allen, had more time in the program. Just one and done. That's this era of college basketball. Yeah. So many transfers. Two for two. So Diallo in, Sellers out. And the lead just five for the Cougs. And he's just going to have to force a few turnovers with this press. If they want to knock this ball game back up here. In these final four minutes. Crowd ready to explode, trying to ignite the home team. Kelvin Sampson decides it's a good time to call a timeout. 55-50. Stick around. We got a good one brewing here in Orlando. At least of that Big 12 regular season championship. UCF trying to knock off number one for the first time in school history. The crowd sensing it right now at Edition Financial. This place is rocking. These last four minutes, Drew, are going to come down to execution and toughness. LJ Cryer, he has done it all night long for the number one team in the land. And that was outstanding execution from the Houston Cougars. Great play out of that timeout to get LJ Cryer a three-point look. So it'll stay with UCF. 
hustle that time by Jamal Shedd. Yep. A, a terrific read right here from LJ Crowder. Looks like he's going across, right? Comes back the other way on the misdirection. He gets the open three-point look. It's a great play because Crowder has both options. He can go all the way across the floor, or he can set his defender up as he did right there and pop back for the triple. Always the toughest guys to guard, right? The ones who move without the ball. Yep. Well, and that option he has right there, you know, it's almost like an RPO in football. The defense is going to be wrong no matter what they do. Walker. Good matchup here on Roberts. Can't score. Oh, tough break for Shamari Allen, who couldn't get the follow to go. And now we've got a tie-up. And Francis. Possession arrow points here towards Houston. And they're going to get Shamari Allen here on his second foul. What a battle here. We're going to see the guys go up. Shamari Allen with a pretty bunny at the rim. He's not able to convert. And then Javier Francis... Is able to secure the rebound and gives Houston a chance to take its first double-digit lead in this game. So a big story in the second half. Houston just has settled down offensively. They're 5 of 11 from 3 in this half. Pryor has done most of the damage. But they have stayed true to themselves. They've not panicked here on the road. Things were looking kind of bleak in that first half. They had Francis and Roberts both shaken up. Francis with an ankle, Roberts holding his hand and favoring it throughout, but they yeah. have fought through it. Here's Allen, rather Darius Johnson. Darius Johnson making a play here late. Yeah. There's Johnson able to set up his defender. She picks up speed right here in the full court and then able to get into the body of Jawan Roberts and finish. Yeah, I mean, Jawan Roberts comes over a little bit late. You know, Coach Sampson definitely didn't like it, but it's one of those where it was almost like Jawan Roberts just, she just let him finish the layup, you know? Short on the free throw. Darius Johnson can't convert the three point play and an eight point lead for Houston. If you're Houston here, what's your approach here the rest of the way? Take your time, no need to rush. Emmanuel Sharp, oh, missed the open shot. And that's not the shot they want in that situation. Obviously, Emmanuel Sharp is a great catch-and-shoot player, but time and score are the utmost importance for the Houston Cougars right now. Put it on the deck. C.J. Walker puts it in. Well, that's why you don't want that shot if you're Houston, right? You want to take your time and run the clock down. The clock is Houston's friend, but UCF now able to convert, not put, close this thing down to a six-point game. Two-possession game here. Coming up on two minutes. Keep an eye on Cryer. Here he is with it. Oh, he sinks it again. LJ Cryer. And, and, and when you guard a player like LJ Cryer, a big time scorer like him, gotta stay on your toes. Shamari Allen still gives the Knights hope. Went down hard that time, favoring his right shoulder. Now you're going to see L.J. Crowder right here. There's miscommunication on the switch between Darius Johnson and Jalen Sellers. That's a defensive miscommunication, but a great answer from Shamari Allen to finish at the rim. L.J. Crowder, a slow first half, but has come on so strong here in the second half with just two or three big-time triples. Shamari Allen in a bit of pain here. Going to try and shake this off. Convert this free throw. So UCF holding on to hope. But they are dealing with a red hot LJ Cryer right now who's got 23 points. Can the Cougars continue to execute here late? Trying to win their ninth in a row against UCF. And the same action for LJ Cryer to try to get him a look. I'd expect this now to turn into a ball screen between Jerron Roberts and Jamal Shedd. Jamal Shedd wheeling and dealing. Now goes towards the bucket. Crash the boards. It's out of bounds. And they point towards Houston. Sellers is absolutely incensed. He wants the officials to take one more look at. And it also happened against Texas Tech here, BJ. Offensively, 
what's the approach here? Do you keep it in Shamari Allen's hands? Do you tell Darius Johnson to make the best basketball yeah, play? Yeah, Where do you go? You're going to go with Darius Johnson doing the best he can to get downhill and maybe trade a shot for himself at the rim or a teammate. Here he is. Johnson trying to manufacture his own shot, and he'll draw a contact. As you're going to see Darius Johnson right here attacks the rim. It looks as he gets closer right here, going to jump stop over the top of LJ Cryer. And then they're going to call the foul on that bit of contact on his forearm. So here's Darius Johnson at the line. Had a tremendous season right now, averaging 14 a game. That battle with Cryer has been fun to watch. <laughs> This to make it a four-point game. And the Knights are right in the thick of it. Everybody on their feet here in Orlando. And I'd like to see Houston get back to the Jamal Shed ball screen, but they're going to let LJ Cryer go one-on-one. -on -one. Cryer, a little big time play. play. Oh, he's doing it all here in the final minutes. A big-time play right there from LJ Cryer. No ball screen needed. Goes one-on-one -on -one against the nice best perimeter defender and scores. What a play. Walker trying to answer. It'll stay with UCF. I mean, what a play by LJ Cryer right here. Able to get to the mid-range spot and use that little bump to get Shamari Allen off balance. That Team up here in the final minute. Here's our game summary. Sellers, Walker, and Johnson, 41 points they've accounted for. LJ Cryer just had himself quite a night. Absolutely. The push LJ Cryer has brought, combined with the timely buckets of Javier Francis and Jamal Shedd, have been the driving force for Houston's ascension in the second half. And if you are UCF here, you got to have a bucket. Just 106 to play. Talking Houston basketball, though, yeah. 40 years ago, a little too long ago for you to remember, but Fice Slamma Jamma. Taking on Georgetown in the NCAA Final Four. You keep dating me on the air, man. You know I'm a basketball historian. Come on now. Oh. One of my colleagues, Reed Geddes, great <laughs> basketball analyst, part of the Houston team that year. Clyde Drexler, Akeem Olajuwon. What a group. Cougars get a big defensive stop, and they do what they've done all year long. And, and UCF probably has to look to foul in this situation. Too much time is going to run off the clock down six to try to play this out. Be tough. Yeah, they got a foul yeah, right now. Yeah, you can't, can't let this clock run down. And they get Emmanuel Sharp. This time, Sharp will head to the line. I mean, the defense here late yeah. in the game has just been outstanding. Watch Jawan Roberts. Yeah, with Jawan Roberts and C.J. Walker. And then watch hands straight up. Outstanding verticality right there from Jawan Roberts. This is exactly how you teach it. You play the close out, move the feet, and then go straight up and down. So many times you see players try to make a play on that player at the rim. They want to block it. They want to reach in. They end up bailing the offensive player out. That's defense, excuse me, defensive mental toughness from Jawan Roberts. One of two for Emmanuel Sharp. So, so many people talk about toughness. That's toughness right there. Playing smart, playing with discipline not making the lazy reach. Darius Johnson, ball gets away from him, and now Houston closing in on their 27th victory of the season. And again, they are eager to get out of here, head back home, and host Kansas on Saturday, their final regular season game of the year. Absolutely, and now Houston with a chance to set themselves up to be the outright Big 12 regular season title champs if they're able to secure that victory over the weekend against the Kansas Jayhawks. And they'll host the Jayhawks at a 4 p.m. game on ESPN. Be sure and tune into that. And if they win that, they'll be the outright Big 12 champion. For Tita Center, is going to be bonkers on Saturday. This team has done it. Not 100%. They fought through adversity on the road. And they have made championship plays down the stretch. Knights unable to put it in here late. Jamal Shedd will hold things up here with 20 seconds. And you can just about put this one to bed. 
So the Houston Cougars prove why they are the top team in the country. Crowd of Cougars celebrating, making the long trip here to Orlando. 67-59, and they are at least a share of Big 12 regular season champions tonight winning on the road. Well, we asked that half.